Hello and welcome. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. This is episode one of Let's Play the Old Gods for Crusader Kings 2. This is May 28th, 2013. This is the day of release. I am super excited to play this mod, or expansion rather. This is DLC. It's, it's a patch. It's everything. And uh, so let's dive right in. I want to play as a independent count level Norse Viking pagan bastard man. We're going to conquer the world. That's the goal. I want to conquer the world before 1066. It's my lofty ambition. We'll see if we can do it. And I want to start off as a count, so um, just to make it more challenging. And I think I'm going to start off here in Agder, because I like how it's close to England and this northern part of what will become the Holy Roman Empire. So let's go ahead and pick Agder, and we'll do a ruler designer. I'm not too worried, really, about the appearance of our character. Let's just try to find someone who looks particularly scary. Uh, I don't know, really. Sure, that's fine. I have blue eyes and I'm bald, so that'll work. And I do want to pick a coat of arms. I like this uh, this one here with the, the battle axes. That'll do well. And I want to name our dynasty just of Arumba. Kind of do it like that. Now. Probably the best trait, education trait to choose, would be, I think, probably Brilliant Strategist. Because we're going to have to fight pretty early on in the game. And one of the issues you run into in this mod is that if you're a Count, you I keep saying mod, if you're a Count, you do not get to use the new technology system quite as much as if you're a Duke or higher. So I would normally want to probably do like a education, like a, a learning education, because I love the technology in this expansion. But... Um, we're going to have a single county, so probably the best thing would be Brilliant Strategist. I am taking level 4, because based on my education traits research, level 4 has the highest likelihood of passing on level 4, and I'm going to educate my kids myself. So let's do that, and let's pick a few other things, like... Um, do we want to start off wounded? Probably not. I don't want to risk anything silly. I could always be a legitimized bastard. That doesn't really give us much. Excommunicated wouldn't really make sense. I don't mind being ugly. Let's be an ugly man. Uh, strong is a great trait, but I don't want to pay that much for it. Lustful, of course. Why not? We're going to take all kinds of concubines on our conquests. Greedy, of course. Slothful, not so much. Patient, I like. I want Roth. Where is Roth? Did I already pass Roth? Cynical Zealous. We can take any of these traits. That's kind of... There, there's zero points, though. Kind of feels like cheating. I don't like it when there are... When there's zero... I, I'm not going to take it. It's not right. Okay. Pilgrim Mirza. Yeah, the experts. Yeah, see, I don't want to take those. Ooh, Berserker. That's a new trait. This character works himself into a mad frenzy during battle, charging fearlessly at the enemy. And Viking. Fearsome Viking Raider. Okay, where's Roth? I must have passed it toward the top. It just fits the mold. I could have sworn Roth is a deadly sin, is it not? Oh well, we'll have to go without it. Maybe I picked the opposite. Maybe oh, that's why it's the opposite of patient. It's the fifth. It's the fifth virtue. Yeah, it costs some, but more martial sounds good. Yeah, and then I'm not going to start as a young man. I'm going to start as a fairly middle-aged man with decent overall stats. Twenty-two martial will help us out a lot in combat, and I think we're good to go. So let's fire it up. And we're off. Now, the first thing I want to talk about in this new expansion is I just want to go over some of the changes that have happened. So let's first get everything in order. I don't like using that map because it doesn't really help me much. And, okay, everything looks good. All right. So first things first, the interface. It looks like you're on a ship, in my mind. The pagans get this nice wooden I interface. The buttons are all colored slightly differently. The icons have like a wooden border to them. 
It looks great. Um, unlike an overhaul mod where there's like new numbers and everything, it's mostly the same. I mean, piety and gold and prestige and all that. Um, but there are a few other changes, like notably the technology system. Now we're a count right now, so we can't really control technology growth. I can't invest in things. Well, actually, I can invest, I just cannot earn. It says right here, counts do not generate technology points. So unfortunately, I won't be able to increase our technology aside from maybe using my spy master. Now, a big change in this is that there are now eight levels to technology instead of just five. And they actually have tangible benefits at halfway points, like each tenth of a point gives you a bonus. So for instance, let's, uh, a great way to, to look at this is, um, let's look at town infrastructure here. Level 1 town infrastructure provides cities with plus 6.2% income. We're currently at level 0.3. So if we go to the city and we hover over the city's income, you'll see it says province technology plus 1.8. 1.8% is conveniently exactly 0.3 or 30% of the tangible benefit from level 1 town infrastructure. This works on things like noble customs as well. Level 1 Noble Customs gives you plus 2 opinion. As soon as you're at level 0.5, which we're 1.1 shy of, then you get plus 1 opinion. This is a big change from regular Crusader Kings 2, where you didn't have that. You had to be on the level to get the bonus. Now, these little gears let you know that the technology is currently increasing. Normal culture, uh, normal technology spread still applies. If you have counties that neighbor you who have more technology than you, it will cause you to have a neighbor's bonus. So we're gaining, like, you know, say, take legalism, 3% per year from having a neighbor who has a higher level of legalism than us. Even if it's just 0.1 level higher, we will get that bonus and try to catch up to them. Now, one of the things that's also different is the, the Spy Master, it looks the same at first glance. Spy Master studies technology. But instead of randomly increasing a technology by 0.1 points, instead it does something amazing. So let's send him down here in the middle of nowhere. Um, and now take a look at our county. Now, when we look at our technology, notice how almost every single thing is moving, except for light infantry and military organization. If you look at this, spy master study technology, we're getting point, uh, we're getting 10% chance per year to increase legalism, just by natural spread, because our spy master is is stealing technology from all of these these attributes. It's huge, and on top of that. If we put our military guy, our steward, and our seer, as this is called, that bonus stacks, and it's multiplicative. So counselors gives plus 45%. My, uh, my seer is giving 45%. Now we're at 17% chance per year, 11%, 16%, 14%. And I think um, yeah, most of them, there is no focus anymore. You can't click like a focus button. Instead of focusing, you invest which we'll have to get to after we actually get some technology, which might be a while. I am going to start improving diplomatic relations because the short reign penalty is massive as a pagan, minus 45. My guys don't even like me. But I am going to do one thing that's a little bit gamey, and that is that I'm going to... Um, I think I'm going to murder everyone. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to murder everyone. See, this guy's got 21 gold. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Um, I need to imprison you, please. Yep, 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 yep. And I'm also going to need to imprison you. I don't have enough piety for that. Hmm, that's not good. Alright, well, perhaps we'll have to wait for a little bit more piety. Or what if I get married? That'll give me some piety. Perfect. So we'll do that. Now, I also... Marrying, I, uh, I don't think we're going to find any adult women that are landed or anything. Actually, these guys are landed. They're seers and stuff. I just want a lustful girl. A lustful girl that we can make lots of babies with. Actually, this one here is strong. I'd like to get that bred into our family. Let's go with that. That's fine. As soon as we get married to her, I'm going to imprison the other person. We still need to talk about raid mechanics, but we'll get to that as soon as I have boats available to use. Now I'm going to imprison, imprison you. Now that they're both in prison, I am going to not ransom, execute, or those things. I'm going to wait until I have enough piety to banish them. Now, imprisoning them unjustly is going to piss off all my people, and so I'm going to need to kill them too. 
Um, so probably, how can I do this? What can I do? Let's hold a blot. Hold a great blot together with your vassals and offer sacrifices to the gods for good harvests and success on the battlefield. This can only be done every ninth year. You have sent out summons to all of your vassals for the blot. Those that have been baptized or profess to follow the teachings of the prophet will have to offer gold to be exempted from this magnificent feast. Now, if you haven't watched my videos before or you're new to the channel, I just want to let you know that I, I play as a... I like to min-max, basically. It's the reason for these imprisonments early in the game. And, um... Yeah, it's a little bit gamey, but we're going to try to conquer the world in under 200 years. So we need to play that way. We do need another ambition. We could try to improve diplomacy, which would be an easy plus 100 prestige. Let's do that. And now we're just going to let a little bit of time tick. And from experience, I know that because he hates me, he's not going to give me any boats, which is unfortunate. The guests have arrived, and the time has come for the blot to begin. You gather outside the temple and start by offering animals as sacrifice to the gods. While their meat is prepared for the feast that is to follow, the blood is sprinkled on statues of Odin, Thor, Freyr, and the other gods, as well as the worshippers themselves. Get ready to murder some people. Godai, Egil, is brought up from your dungeons and escorted to the temple. As soon as he's... You're not so... I don't want to kill this guy. I want his money. As soon as he spots you among those gathered nearby, he hurls insults and spittle your way, continuing even as the noose is placed around his neck. The hatred in his eyes cannot be mistaken. Oh, wow. Yeah, all father, we offer you the sacrifice. Yay! Mayor Sig... Sig oh, God, we're going to murder everyone! He's brought up from our dungeons and escorted to the temple. All right, he dies too. With the feast over, we move on to celebrate. <laughs> Now I have two new random vassals who don't know about what just happened. And they inherited the money. That's unfortunate. I actually wanted to banish them so I could take their funds. Excellent. We already have the, uh, the Spymaster study technology. The people of Luristan have progressed beyond our own technolo technological level. I have managed to study their advancements, and, and the documents enclosed here should help us reach their level. We have a 33% chance of getting 50 points in each of the, five, each of the three trees. Looks like we got it in military. So even though as a count I don't generate technology, since I've earned 50 from that, I can, for instance, invest in light infantry. I don't have to pay the full amount because we already have level 0.5. I could actually get light infantry to level 1, but that's not very useful. I'd rather save up and try to get 100 points maybe so I can get shipbuilding. I want ships. We need to raid. It's very important. Now I wanted to see something. This is all Norse. I could probably walk men all the way down. I think we can siege and take money from them that way. The feast is over, and with it, the blot. It will be at, at least nine years until you hold the next one. But as your vassals return home, most seem to agree that the ceremony was well worth the trip. I agree. So we have a little bit of money. Um, most of my vassals still hate me because they think I'm a tyrant. Which is understandable. I am a tyrant. I'm a bastard. I'm an ugly man. I'm a military brilliant strategist. Let's hang everyone. Now we do have some piety. But I think I need another. Another little bit. We're able to do all kinds of attacks. We can do the subjugation of Norway. Pagans are allowed to subjugate other pagan rulers once per ten years. With the become king ambition, there is no such time limit against targets within the kingdom. Free men are always willing to follow the mightiest ruler. If we win the war, we would gain 100 piety. We would take or vassalize all titles held by him within the kingdom of Norway. Even a white piece. Nope. Yeah, even a white piece, I would gain piety. We attack you. He has 380 men, and I have 292. Probably not a good idea. So, what to do? Oh, I really want that money. I want the money from these guys. 25 gold and 23 gold. What can I do? 
There's a reason. There is a reason why I want this money. I have a plan. I think I'm going to need 40, at least 40 piety. But perhaps it's best to not play quite so gamey. Okay, we're going we're gonna to play with just these guys. They don't know I'm a tyrant. Um, I want to award some honorary titles. We'll make him our law speaker. Memorizes the law of the realm and serves as its highest judicator. And you can actually give him two titles. We'll also make him the cupbearer. And the reason I'm trying to make this mayor like me is because he is the only one that has any boats. I don't have boats. My bishopric type holding, the temple, doesn't have any boats. But the city does. They have six galleys. And so I want those boats. So we've already given him two honorary titles. Let's also see if we can make him one of my advisors. Yeah, we can make you the, the marshal, which will make him like me more. We have a 17 learning person. Actually, I'd probably prefer to make it this guy, because he's an actual vassal. This guy would be better, but I need the opinion. I really need the opinion to offset that short reign modifier. Now, this is a new function of the court chaplain or seer. Send your seer to tend to the lost souls in a province, converting heretics and infidels. You can only use it on pagans or on uh, within your own realm to convert people to your religion. So you can't, like, I, as a pagan, I can't use it on the Christians, unfortunately. But let's, uh, let's research cultural tech again and research military tech again. Although having more troops might be beneficial, an extra 47% levy size on this castle really might make a difference. But then again, the technology, look at that technology. Counselors plus 95%. I mean, it's just so gorgeous. I love technology. I want it, I want it badly. No, I should probably do it the other way, as soon as we can. I'm also going to lower city taxation. This is kind of a questionable move, but it's an extra 10 opinion, and I really need those boats. So, I think I'm going to wrap this one up here, and in the next video, we will begin going on a war streak, start raiding. We'll talk about the raiding mechanics and how loot levels and all that work, and hopefully we'll be able to get enough boats from my vassal. Right now, we have the ability to get two boats. Yep, he can provide a total of six. If I can get that opinion just a little bit higher, we'll have enough boats. We need at least four. So I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you soon.